let me repeat again guys because it's not recorded whenever your content is out of this boundary of a div in that time what will happen uh, the content is going to outside the boundary and it is called a default the overflow okay then we have basically uh, three kind of stock we can handle a overflow initial one it will go into out of the out of the boundary second one you have an option we can hide the data means if i return here hidden what will happen if i refresh you can see the data whatever is outside this boundary it's going to be hidden got it this is the use of hidden now what will happen okay now the problem is here i i cannot able to read i cannot able to read that data right whatever data inside this div i cannot able to read but to solve this problem and you don't want to go beyond this area and you want to show the data we have a concept called scroll right scroll means you want to display the scroll bar to this content for that you have written overflow equal to scroll what will happen it is going to display the vertical and horizontal scroll to you okay just imagine in initial designing uh, like previous example we have content but we hide it we cannot able to see that but in this year you can see that we have a content it's by default is getting hide but if we are giving the scroll bar it's going to display that scroll bar data okay now you can see that here the problem is i require only this vertical scroll bar okay but i don't require this horizontal uh, scroll bar now if you're going to set overflow equal to scroll what will happen it's going to set both both vertical and horizontal means both y-axis and x-axis right for that suppose you want to only set the scroll bar in y-axis then you have to write overflow What need to write write overflow x auto sorry overflow y auto you can see that by default it's getting added the y axis one let me do one thing guys you got it what it did overflow y equal to auto always remember y means vertical x means horizontal means y axis and x axis if i said overflow y then what will happen it's specific it's specifically going to add the overflow to this x axis means you are going to see that x axis scroll bar the same way if you want to see the scroll in y, x axis then you have to write overflow x equal to auto or auto you can able to see why it's not displaying i'll let you know okay. whenever you are going to add the scroll bar in x if the content is not beyond this one then it automatically going to add the scroll bar in y axis okay that i always recommended it's always recommended you have to use the overflow y because the x is is going to be any any because it's already 100 percent right only you have to do the scroll in the y axis for that you have to use overflow y all the time but whereas in this concept you want to do the vertical scrolling sorry the horizontal scrolling that time you have to use the overflow x for the vertical scrolling you have to use overflow y okay these are the two type of overflow you want to use in your program this is the overflow what is like what is the overflow right if any content outside this boundary of a div then we call it overflow overflow we can handle three way 
you can show as it is we can hide the overflow content or we can add the scroll bar to the uh, scroll bar to the content means in future if you want to add any kind of a scroll bar to a div or uh, any kind of scroll bar to an element if it is that is going to over, uh, like overflow you need to use overflow x or overflow y okay this is all about our overflow just imagine to use this overflow you must have to specify the width and height of the div otherwise what will happen at least you have to mention the height of the div because if you don't mention then after this height only this going to apply this scroll bar means if any of the control you want to apply the overflow then you have to minimum to minimum specify the height attribute because without how height how are going to apply the scroll bar right that is the basic requirement for adding a overflow and scroll bar okay let's go go for second one what is second one we'll go for opacity okay okay what is opacity now just imagine i'm opening this opacity example Let me open the original image. You can see this image, this image both are equal. But you can see this image looks little bit faded. Okay. Why faded? Means I have set the opacity, I have decreased the opacity of a image. Means suppose you want to give any of the control in transparent format you want to set the transparent of a uh, of a, any of the control then you have to use the concept of opacity let me show you how opacity going to work for that we have a tag called opacity i have added one image image here and i have in the image i have said opacity always remember the opacity will start from 0 to 1 0 to 1 means 1 means no opacity zero means that is, uh, zero means the full opacity if i refresh you can see that nothing is displaying why because it's getting already getting hired okay if i refresh it here you can able to see that means you can give zero point suppose three you can see that it's going little bit more um, opacity you want to add if you're going to increase suppose 0 0.8 you can see that it's getting a little bit more uh, like darker means opacity means if you are going to apply this opacity any of the element the element is going to little bit transparent for that like same way you can see that here the uh, in the um, all this one is added the opacity or uh, this windows one right because you can able to see the background the same way if you want to reduce the opacity of a image you want to reduce the opacity of a, any of the element in html you have to use the concept called opacity always remember the opacity is used from 0 to 1 1 means full 0 means that is that is you applied full opacity 1 means there is no opacity okay and always remember you have to you if you go to increase the opacity then it is going to give a little bit darker if i in decrease the op opacity they, then the whatever element you apply the opacity it's going to be a little bit lighter that is the use of opacity okay it's based on the requirement you're going to use that this is the basic syntax you have to know how to set opacity okay and then go uh, like we have discussed in html like uh, how to design a table right like initially in the table we have to design the table structure in the modern way let me go and work with the table let me write a table. can you show, show the opacity example in your, in your website This one I'm talking, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Just imagine, let me set it to one. If I set it to one, what will happen is going to display me full whatever the original image. As I going to decrease the opacity of this particular uh, image, then I going to use the different. I, uh, I told zero to its one value means you have to give the fraction number of value. Suppose I want to give zero point six. 
and you will see this is the original image right if I refresh you can see that this is the another image it's getting a little bit more less means it's just a little bit less the color of that particular area in the same way if you are going to decrease or if I'm going to suppose set 3 if I refresh you can see the image little looks little bit more lighter means if you are you, you, what is the use of opacity means if you want to set any of the element darker and less lighter then you have to use the concept of opacity opacity means transparency if you do any kind of transparency to the any of the image or any of the element then you have to use the concept of opacity right that is the use how are you going to show that opacity example suppose just example i will say it here if i go mouse over you can see that the background color is getting showing a little bit lighter right that is the use of opacity so, means you are using the, um, the color but the color is lighter so lighter suppose you want to apply any lighter uh, concept in your page any of the element then you have to use the concept of opacity okay this is just a element you have to remember opacity you set the dark darkness and the uh, like the lightness of a element that is the use of opacity its value always vary from 0 to 1 0 to 1 means you can give 0 0.1 like 0 0.9 or also you can give also you can give 0 0.221 like you can go in number of fraction is up to you how you are going to use based on your requirement this is the use of opacity let me go and discuss about the table like we already we already covered this table in our html but now we will go and design a table okay the table will take a little bit more time. Let me discuss one by one. Okay. Let me add one table. You all know the HTML syntax. Suppose we are giving a table, and here we are adding the syntax called H1. Example. Okay. Let me add one table. You know, to add a table, we have to use the table tag, and inside table tag, we have th, right? Sorry, tr. In table r, we have a th, th, we have a pose, uh, yeah, ts mean table heading, and we have to add table heading name, suppose um, gender and Age. just example age and we'll go to another one tr let me add some td td stand for table data ta stand for table heading okay td will be the um, like suppose we give name john and let me add another row okay you can see this is my table but it will ask me this is not looks like a table right it just looks like a uh, like just some alignment but if you select it you can see that all the data is in a row and column format but now the question how I can go and add style to each and every attribute of this table now our first I want to do let me create a class or let me add a class like style that is going to expand expand this table to 100% okay 100% means for that so I have a table tag table table is a element right table is a element tag I have different table then I will set width 100%. And what will happen if I refresh? You can see this table is displaying 100%. Right? This is a 100% right. Now, what I make to do? Let me put one border in in the table. For that, what I need to write? Suppose border border one pixel. Suppose one pixel. You can see nothing is happening. Okay, there is a question why nothing is happening. 
because already remember how table works that day also i discussed let me discuss today also table is just a placeholder right table is just a placeholder but inside that actually work done by the row and column already know that we have a column okay we have multiple column inside the column we have the row means the border the whatever the border is there it should be apply to this column only you got it is going to apply this column only means this cell only means the cell has left padding left border top border right border and bottom border got it means if you actually look at table it's a combination of a row and column right and combination of a row and column is give you a one cell cell means a td or th then you have to set the whatever logic you want to apply to a table that is going to work for a this one 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 cell means now our main motto is not going for table because we need to apply the all the border all the things to this th and to this td got it for that we have to write the syntax for th and td okay for that what will i write to do th is my one of the on, element please. yeah suppose then right then border one pixel but You can see i told you initially the table is a placeholder the place placeholder means it's just a container mean we are talking about this side area these are the areas right these areas are the side area for this table means when i have apply any border to the table it's only work the the left hand side top hand side and the bottom of the table due to that when i have apply the border one pixel solid red it's only work on this table border area but it's not work on this individual row and column you got it means whatever style you are going to apply is only applied to this table it's not going to apply this tr and td or any 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 of the places okay always remember that one because table is just a placeholder means it's a container like d which is content some basic tag now what i define i define table width is 100% and table uh, border is 1 pixel solid now what i have to do in th th means the table heading in th let me set the same way let me set the background color will be green a refresh you can see my background color is now green okay you got it now i have sent this th because it's only exclusively apply for this th same way let me change the color to change a color we have written color 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 icon yeah, yeah. color color, color white icon. yeah white perfect then white you can see now it's changed to white okay these all are the different different structure to define now. same way i want to apply the style to this particular uh, i have to apply the style to this td or the td then what i'll do i'll write td td means td is one of the element then suppose background color let's change to blue okay. and refresh you can see how it's work i have created a class for th then in the td whatever i added in th it's going to work there whatever i added in td it's going to work there okay now you can see there is some gap is showing right you can see some gap is showing in top bottom all this gap all this thing now how you can go and reduce this gap okay for that we have a concept called
guys let me think about that remember all these things command called spacing okay sorry okay let me show you again yeah. no, what not done. No, no, logical. no no logical separation you have not done sorry sorry logical separation you have not done RT, RT, RT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to there only. That syntax I forgot actually. I just remember. Now you can see there is a uh, white space between all the all the things, right? You can see that all the things there is a white space is there. Okay. For that we have a syntax called border spacing. Now the border spacing by default is given by the browser. Okay. Whatever the browser is given by the border spacing, you're going to display that one but suppose you want to remove the all the border spacing in the table attribute you have to write border spacing is the attribute then you have to set zero pixel then what will happen when you refresh you can see all the border gone okay you can see all the border gone that is the use of table sp border spacing but it is not always recommended but i am just saying that the how you can go and remove the border this is the use of border spacing but actually we have to do different way now what are we going to do we want to like give the padding to this individual cell okay individual cell then what we can do you can go here and give padding suppose 10 pixel and what will happen you can see the automatically the padding is applied to this individual cell that is the padding one the same way you can go and add the different different style to specific one but just imagine in this case this td is applied to all the things okay means all the td is going to apply now suppose you want to change this john td to different color how you can do that either you can write the inner style otherwise what will do you can create a class suppose you get a red class then color red then it will go now apply that class to this particular it's a background let me change the background color and see means if you are applying td is going to apply the all the tds in the table but if you want to change a specific td class or specific design for a td or anything then you have to write a class and apply that class to this particular td then it's going to work that way. It's up to you how you go and define your all the things. Okay. Now you can see that there is no specific tag for table. Now it's up to you how you can go and design your table structure. Okay. Because you can see there is no spe no special uh, no special tag 
like all are the background color colors like all these things with all these things there right there is no special tag for table to design the way it's up to you how you go and design the table structure okay this is all about you okay the table is done you can able to see a one table i'll give a task to you design one different different type of table okay let me go for the next one called z index okay. what is z index okay let me show you an example of z index then we'll go uh, discuss about z index okay you can see i have a image okay but the image is top of my text i have some text this image is top of my text but what i trying to do it here i want to make sure this image should be go down and my text should be display up okay let me draw something uh, you have to know all this thing what till you trying to do it here okay when it just imagine this is a browser okay in this browser when you add any element okay when you add some element then what will happen browser automatically create the concept of indexing okay what is indexing let me show you you will understand this core concept how browser work now imagine all these things are one one block and you have added this block in your browser when you added this browser i uh, told you uh, from day one all the things going to build from top to bottom right means uh, whatever you are designing the page is going to top to bottom just imagine this will be your one this will be two it will three and four right now what happened the browser is going to set the index what is index when you create any of the element in the browser the browser create a tree structure what is tree structure let me show you the tree structure means the browser is going to create this kind of layer okay it's going to clear this kind of layer now you can see this layer means this layer is override in the this is the one layer but this layer is override this layer right overriding this layer same way it's overriding this one the same way this overriding this way but suppose you in some of the scenario you want okay this is going to override this one but i don't want to override i want this should be go down to this one suppose this is one this is two this is three and this is four now you see two is top of the this place one but the things your requirement is you want to override this two should be go down to the one means the structure will be first is your two means it is your one this is your two but just imagine it should be go like this way means two will be down one will be top okay this type of scenario may be come suppose you are creating some slider you are creating something like that way that way you need to require this kind of top like if i open our site you can see that in home page we have this we have this two icon right to left menu here but this one you can see that is top of this image right this two arrows is the top of the image if in any of the scenario you want to put any of the element top of an top of same element suppose in this image you want to put this element and you want to move this element to back to this element then you have to know the concept of z index z index is a concept where you need to segregate the layer concept It means you have multiple layer in top of layer another layer and you want to set the priority of a layer which layer you want to show first okay that is the use of z index means in this example you can see this is my image but this image i want to set back to this text that is my priority 
for that i have to use the concept of z index okay what is z, you got it what is z index right z index means it's a priority to set how the content is going to display display in front or display to back for that what will happen okay guys this is the position one i'm going to i will take a whole entire class to discuss this position but um, just imagine this one z index z index means now i have set z index one what will happen it is going to display me top if i go and set z index minus one then what will happen if i refresh is going to back you can see that text is now displaying top of the image means i have set i have uh, like set instruction to the browser okay set the priority the index of you already know the index right the the sequence and the priority of this image to minus one means it goes to the back to the uh, this text if i going to set one what will happen it is going to front of the image if i set to minus one it's going to the back of the image now the best example of this slider the slider you want to make a slider and you you have the navigation menu in top of the slider then you can see this is the top of the slider same way you can see this is my uh, contact us right if i go and inspect it and i can see that just a second i can see that they have set, you can see that they have set z index if i remove this z index you can see what happened to my this one i'll show you real time this is my uh, floating icon this is my floating icon in top of this content means if something you want to put top of a content then there is a use of z index always remember if you want to put anything in top of a content then you have to go for the z index z hyphen index i'll show you now this is my one of the uh, area if I, it will always be top of my content right the always top of my content but they have set the z index to something some top value they have given if i remove this z index you can see that this image is override the priority of this z index this uh, area due to that the half part of this one is override by this image got it that is the use of z index then why is required just imagine you are developing one application and that application you have a suppose this kind of stuff like right? suppose this is the stuff of create new suppose you are opening gmail in gmail in mobile if you open you can see that right uh, top uh, right hand like bottom right hand side you have a plus to compose mail right suppose you want to create that type of structure in your html page then you require the concept of a z index okay z index means it's going to set the priority of a content means it's going to set the top or it's going to set the back that is the use of uh, this one you can see it here also if you go and see this one which maybe they have used this one button yeah you can see the z index they have set means all the things if i'm going to display top of any of the content then you have to use the concept of a z index i think you clear on this z index right z index actually work in the case case of position position will take one class uh, yesterday, uh, tomorrow we're going to discuss about position because position is the basic requirement of position suppose what is position let me show you if you want to display anything top of something then you have to set the position but if you want to set the priority of something then you have to set the z index means you want to display this data here this content here then you have to use the concept of a position but if you want to set the priority of a content like this is going to display top of everything then you have to set the concept of a z index okay position we are going to discuss tomorrow but you have to know the concept of this z index always remember if you want to set the priority of a element then you have to go for z index and if you want to set the placement of a element then you have to use the concept of like this position position we're going to discuss tomorrow okay got it the concept of position then you have to use z index colon whatever position you want to set it may be minus it may be plus it's up to you how you're going to set it okay if you don't set then a browser automatically based on the designing of your application it's going to set 
the index of your all this element okay this is the use of z index let's go and discuss about the final one for today's is called form like in the form class we have discussed how to design a form okay form means we have a normal text box like in our example we know whenever working on a form you know that we have designed all the forms all the forms in black and white right let me show you that one forms you can see all the forms in black and white now we'll go add some colors to it okay let's me show how we can add a color How to add a color to all these things? Let me open one form designing. You can see this is one of the form. Okay. Let me show you how we can design this kind of form using the CSS. Okay. For that, I have created a predefined form class. Let me open and you can see that i have a form okay i have a form then i have added action you already know all these things right i have a label and i have a okay someone asked me that time how i go to add the label and how can going to display all these things you have to add a label and you have to add a text box and you have a label you have to add a text box the same way and to use but imagine there is a tag, property called for okay what is this for for means it is going to ask this label this is the label is used for which control means this is a label we added right this label is used for which control for that what you need to add you need to add the id element this whatever id you define this one you have to display this f name it's totally optional but it's always recommended you have to give this for attribute to the label if you use or don't use that doesn't matter but it's always recommended you have to give this for one means this label is used for which control for that reason you have to give for equal to f name in f name means it is the id of f name same one l name id of l name country the id of country okay it's defined here now you can see how it's getting round corner and all these things displaying here let's go and discuss each by each and every one okay css giving you this kind of selector now i am going for another kind of selector let me discuss the selector first selector means you know what is the use of selector selector is used to select a specific element for that you can see that it's use input type equal to text means either you can define a class either you can define a class and inside the class you need to apply that class this specific element right as you do as you do in earlier but if you want to write this kind of a syntax what it does it will go to input just just read all these things it will go to the input and check where the type equal to text example if i go and change the types to password I refresh and you can see that this is not working you can see that i have two text box and i have changed the one text to password but i have written the syntax here input square bracket means it will go to input the square bracket means a property attribute it will check where the type equal to text means you can see that you have the type equal to password due to that it's not displaying this is this class is not applying to this particular text box okay suppose you want to create this one then you have to go add input type equal to text the same way you can add temp input type equal to password refresh you can see that is applied to here means what i'm trying to say it here like you can create a basic class and apply to a specific element it's up to you otherwise you can go for id selector or you can go for a class selector okay but css giving a concept of attribute selector attribute selector means 
this is the attribute right these all are the attribute the type equal to attribute id equal to attribute all this attribute for that it's saying input is a element means you can see input is a element and inside in, input i am selecting where type equal to text then it will run the css where they'll find the type equal to text okay then whatever css is going to write it's going to display into that this is the one of the selector you have to know this is called attribute selector this is only specific applied to for this input type when you design any input or all these things you have to define this type and then you have to do all your code this is all about now how they did all these thing round corner all these things like yesterday i have uh, written right border radius you know already border radius we discussed yesterday how we can set the border radius it's set and border uh, border they have set like one pixel solid uh, this is the color they have set the pixel then display we discuss about display inline block all these things they have display and margin they have set the margin left and bottom of this padding width all this size they have discussed all they have set it here the same way the another uh, you can see here i have a discuss about uh, yesterday about the hover functionality right how the hover is going to work means i told hover means when you're doing the mouse over to any of the element you can apply the uh, CSS. For that, we learn about colon hover. Same way, it's saying the input is an element where type equal to submit. They are defined input type equal to submit. And if someone hover this particular element, I want to change the background color. You can see if I go and mouse over this submit, you can see the color getting changed based on this CSS. Okay. This is one of the selector you can use the hover. As I told, you can use hover in all the places. Whenever you have an element, you can use the hover one. This is the use of a CSS in form. Then you learn new tag today. This is called input type equal to text. This is the one of the attribute selector. Okay. That day I, I intentionally uh, did not tell you about all these things because you will getting confused. Today going to learn about this attribute selector. Okay. This is the use. And you know all this is a group selector and this is the uh, event selector. This is a normal element selector. Okay. This is all about you have to know. Anyone, any question? Sir, can you please uh, explain about uh, the uh, Jet Index concept, sir? Okay, okay, okay. Let me show you Jet Index. Okay. Let me draw something and you have to understand this one. Just imagine this is your sorry. This is your browser, and you are adding the element. Element means you are adding something here, adding something, something, something here. Okay. And just imagine you want to add something top of this one. Okay top of this one means this is your element this is your element and inside that you have this is one element and this is one element now you can see inside this element inside this element means inside this area you have added two one two element but due to you have added two element what will happen you have set in left hand side right hand side now what will happen by default if i'm going to add it's by default going to back side it will automatically go to back or it will go to front now to manage which component is go for front and which component go for back okay means you want to make this one to go to back and this one make to the front in that case we need the concept of a z index means inside a uh, inside a uh, control inside a element if you want to set the position of position priority position i'm not sitting in position it's a position priority that case you have to use the concept of z index i'll show you the example here only here you can see in this just imagine the same example here you have to understand just imagine this is your image okay this angular is a image that's the, this mark this green one is your image in top of that you have two arrow here okay two arrow here 
now you want to display this arrow top of the image but the things will be how you can set the top of the image for that you have to increase the index of this one to more than this one means you have to set more index to this red color as compared to this green color then what will happen the automatically browser will display the top of the green okay let me show you let, let me example give, give this one you can see that this is one of the area okay this is just example as compared to your this diagram this is one of the area this is the button okay now uh, it displaying top of this image but why display top of the image because is the z index set more than to this background if i decrease if i decrease this z index you can see if i decrease the z index what will happen you can see that is not displaying in in like that intentionally i need to increase the z index of that one is should be display top of this element that is the use of z index z index is used to set the priority of a content is going to display first or last first last means is going to display top of this content or it's going to display the uh, back of this content that is the use of z index okay z index is used when you are going to develop this kind of designing okay suppose in top of that you want to do some next and previous all all these things then you have to do the concept of a z index but to understand the z index how it work you have to understand the concept of a position that is going to discuss tomorrow the concept of position means how you can place something the right hand side corner you want to do something in bottom all this fixed corner then you have to know the concept of position but today you have to understand this z index is always used to set the priority of a content who is going to display first who is going to display back or who is going to display the top clear yeah clear sir thank you yeah yeah anyone any other question can you provide any task yeah yeah i'm that that's just planning now okay now uh, what i'm trying to do it here you guys can you anyone create a registration form can I, can you guys create a registration form like uh, using html yes, and sir. css yeah uh, it should be uh, you, you can go and share the not code i am setting up a uh, common repository where it will go and upload your code there okay and the things will be you go and create let me show you on something let me send it like this one you can see this kind of design name address suppose you, are, you want to go a registration form where you to enter the name email id phone number your gender and date of birth and you have suppose um, resume and you have to submit and you have to design this form this way like the name should be there and asterisk should be there this means it's required and the text box should be looks like this way okay all the things you have to do that's where drop down which course you want to selected all these things should be there then there is submit button can you create this kind of uh, ui using html and css try try if you, i know that whatever you are learning that is looks like good but when you actually try to start the code that time only you know the what is the different different use case of all these things then do one thing let's try some let's spend some time to design this this at least just copy paste this one copy paste means not copy paste the code you have to see this one and design your own way okay this tax for tomorrow if you want to do because uh, as of now we did not complete a lot of thing but uh, now the priority will be you can start designing all these thing using html and css because you already know the basic syntax right html and css just to try this one first let's say tomorrow we're going to discuss all the how you can design your website all these things okay okay thank you thank you all have a nice day bye